Welcome to Comfort Having Number Two. I am your host, Echo Fan Grey Wolf. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you three videos from a TikTok, and then we're gonna get into it, okay? So, oh, for the love of God, <laughs> technology, man, technology. But before I show you the videos, I'm gonna try to word this right. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna butcher it, or I'm gonna fall on my face. So. The question is, is it better to be good with weapons or is it better to essentially be the weapon? Okay, she was hot, but this isn't about her. Alright, so I asked this question because um, we all follow a lot of martial artists on the internet. We really do. And a lot of them... If you're not following somebody who does weapons, you follow somebody who's trained with weapons. So you, if not, you follow someone who does more physical hand-to-hand -hand shit. Which means if you follow me, you know I do both. I just don't have a training partner. I mean, punching I mean a training partner to um, actually show you guys how shit is supposed to work. Because, you know, if you have a training partner, people actually tend to pay more attention when there's two people on that screen versus one person trying to demonstrate shit by himself, which does not work. I do not have set equipment to show you guys the full extent of the knowledge in which I have. Which would mean most of you think that I'm full of shit. Which is okay. It's okay. Because 9 times out of 10, if you can't really see how it works, you probably shouldn't believe it anyway. And that's okay. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But I do tell you guys the truth. I do give you 99.9. .9. So, I asked this question from a TikTok. I got like 7 likes, 6 likes, and 6 more likes. Uh, parts 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to show you parts 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to try to be as quiet as a fucking church mouse while you're watching it. But the question is, is it better to actually know hand-to-hand -hand combat versus only weapon skills when it comes to your martial arts? And for those who don't think that that's possible, I ask you to look at the Bushu videos. And I also want to state one more fact before I film. You don't walk around all goddamn day with your martial art weapon. Okay, if you're going to tournaments and you're doing tournaments with weapons, okay, you have a legitimate excuse and 9 out of 10, no one's going to be harassing you because you're going into a gym with a bow staff, a majestic spirit, three section staff, etc, etc, where you can't walk down the street with those things sticking out. Yeah, you're not going to walk down the street with hooked swords out without getting harassed by some form of law enforcement. So without further ado, let's, uh, I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. Let's, um, let's go. Bear with me. This is for martial artists out there. Um, probably gonna make a two-parter. Uh-oh. Well, that sucked. I'm probably gonna go... I don't know what the hell happened. ...do this on my YouTube, because I have done this. Why are you not functioning? ...to perform. But now I'm going to ask the question, all right? And I ask this question because there are many different martial arts, all right? And I'm going to piss off a lot of martial artists. And if I piss you off, then I've done my job, all right? And I'm pissing you off intentionally. I'm making a point, okay? So here's the question. Besides being well-rounded in as many martial arts as you can learn, is it better to be able to fight with your body as the weapon, which means you are the weapon, or is it better to be able to fight with weapons but not having enough martial arts skills with your body? Now, I ask this question because a lot of people, um, a lot of people don't understand what I mean by this concept. So I'm going to explain the concept. I'm going to take a line from a Fatal Fury movie because in this world of scientific wonder, the human body is still the ultimate machine. I will always believe that because forever and ever before I ever learned how to use weapons, I learned how to fight. All right? Now, I'm not saying you have to agree with me. I am not going to be hurt if you disagree with me. But what I am saying is, you don't always walk around with a weapon at the ready. So you need to be the weapon at the ready. A lot of people don't understand when I say that because a lot of people aren't up there in age. They don't have a lot of the experiences that I've had. And I guess probably more professional fighters will probably agree with me more than baseline martial artists. So you being the ultimate weapon, 
meaning, you know, forearms, elbows, fist, knees, feet, being all you will ever need. Now, y'all see me train with weapons, okay? So it's not like I don't know how to use weapons. It's just that you can't walk around in any city, in America anyway, with your flashy ninja weapons unless you're training in the park without having some flack from somebody. I've learned this taking weapons to the park in my own backyard where I've had um, questionable people ask me questionable things. I've taken weapons to other parks where someone has literally had police show up. So, again, is it better to be the weapon or only take training in how to use weapons but not able to use your martial arts skills? Like, let's just say you only took martial arts weapons training. You didn't take any know how to punch, know how to kick, know how to block stuff. You just learned how to, I'm going to make a part two. You didn't learn how to actually throw a punch or a kick. You just learned how to work a bow staff. You understand where I'm going with this? Stay tuned. Bear with me. Okay, so for those who don't know, there are a lot of martial arts where they just do teach you how to use a weapon versus the actual martial art. And this has happened on many occasions to some people. Here's part two. I know you're probably all thinking... Is that even a possibility to only learn how to work weapons versus actual martial arts? I'm going to tell you, yes, it is. Because, um, I'm going to piss off some Wushu cats. When Wushu stopped being an actual martial art and became more performance... Sorry. ...took all of the, um, martial arts aspect out and put more of the show aspect in. Now, a lot of Wushu people are damn good performers, but a lot of them probably also aren't very good at the fighting aspect, you know? Like, before Wushu, like, went super radicalized and became the martial art that it is today, it wasn't sport. It wasn't entertainment. It was real shit, you know? The weapon training and stuff is real, but now it's more flash than martial art. So, like I said... Is it better to actual no martial arts and be able to use your God-given physical universal weapons versus having a bow staff or something in hand that you only know how to use a staff, but you've never actually been in combat with a staff? You know, training is one thing. Actual combat is another. Understand, I say this for a reason because I train with weapons I will never take them into actual combat because as good as I look on camera with those weapons, it doesn't mean that I can't get my ass kicked by somebody who's been training longer with that weapon, okay? However, if they've been training along with that weapon, but they don't actually know how to use martial arts when they don't have a weapon, I got a fighting chance. So it's a catch-22 when you think about it. But if I swing my bow staff and you take it, and you've only known bow staff work from the time you started. You don't know how to throw a kick. You don't know how to throw a punch. But your bow staff, staff defense is, like, phenomenal. You can't kick my ass with anything but that bow staff. But let's say for the instance, you know the bow staff, but I know short sticks. And I catch the bow staff in the fat of my arm like I was taught, lock it, and break it. And now I have a stick. You only know bow staff training. You don't know, like, Kali or Short Stick from Kimbo. So now I got a fighting chance because you can still do the basic block with the shorter stick. But if you haven't been taught that and you've only been taught the bow staff, it's going to be a problem. Just like this video, we're going to have to make part three. But I'm going to probably make this into a YouTube because it'll be easier to explain why I don't have to keep making stops and short videos. But the question is, is it better to have only weapons training? or be trained as the weapon with weapons training. That's what I should have worded it as. Okay, I know you're probably all thinking, is that even a pop? Okay, let's get part three so we can get into this. Okay, so this is part three. I'm going to make this the final part because I'm just going to go and make a YouTube video about this whole damn thing and solve this problem, and after I post it, I'll let you guys know. Now, the reason why I asked the question in the first place is because everybody follows martial artists on the Internet. A lot of martial artists... Don't give us the whole 1,000. They don't even give us 98.9. I try to give you the whole 1,000, and yeah, I will piss off more BJJ people than anybody else. But that's because I suck at it, and 
I'm not good at it. Doesn't mean somebody who knows BJJ can whoop my ass. It just means that if we're in the gym and I roll with them, I'm gonna be tapping all goddamn day. I have accepted that, you know, because I learned my BJJ in the army. But I'm also against the belt system because the belt system is also a system of control. And you can have all the black belts in the world. It doesn't mean you can beat anybody ass when you leave that dojo. You know, I've learned that beating black belts in sparring matches because I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. And it's like, well, I've never seen that before. I said, because you've never been in a fucking fight where your life is depending on what you do next. Which is why if I do a Captain America move off the wall and it catches you, it worked at the time. Will I attempt it again? No, because you can't run to the well too many times. The well will eventually run dry. Point being made, this is not a real ring for Wing Chun. This is a ring that I bought from Michaels so that I can practice Pak Sao and so I can get my chain punches straight for Wing Chun. Am I going to remember that shit when I'm in combat? Fuck no. Can I use this in combat even though it's not iron or steel? Yes, I can because if you are a true martial artist, your weapon is supposed to be an extension of your skill. But if you were only taught weapons and you were never taught actual combat skills, you have a problem. Because you have become relying on that one instrument that you were taught how to use. Let's say you were taught seven different weapons, but you never had a literal physical martial art class where you get to put those weapons into use outside of, you know, I can block and I can strike. Okay, let's say that. But you come against someone who's not had weapons training, but they know how to use their hands and their feet, and they have been taught how to combat weapons without weapons. Okay? Essentially, uh, essentially, essentially making them the weapon. Now, the thing about a weapon is it is attached to a human being. All right? And that human being is an ace with that weapon. The person without the weapon is going to have a problem until they don't. This is where your cardio comes in. This is where your extensive training comes in. This is when I say it's better to be the weapon than be the one wielding the weapon. You being well-rounded in martial arts is going to help you a whole lot more than it's going to hurt you. I'll do more on my YouTube video to make it more apparent. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll let you guys know when it's posted. I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. Peace. Okay. So this is part three. Okay. So hopefully I made some headway with that. All right. And let me explain. All right. There are many different martial arts. All right. For you guys who read comic books and hit, hit up with that Batman those 127 martial arts. That's not even the surface of how many martial arts there actually is, not just counting from China, Japan, or Korea. You have to also take in the fact that Vietnam may have a martial art. Laos may have a martial art. Mongolians may have a martial art. Uh, Malaysians, Indonesians, all throughout the Tahitian Islands, Samoa, and Brazil, and all the places that martial arts has been. Martial arts is basically universal now. So damn near everybody in their mama knows a form of martial art, including the people that you see in the park doing Tai Chi. Now, the reason why I brought this up is really quite simple, all right? As a martial artist, whether you are using it as a performance to make money, or whether you're fighting for your life, or you just use it because it's a way of life, there are some factors that you need to know. Just because you are training in a dojo does not mean you are going to go outside of that dojo and be a fucking ace. No. It does not mean that you can get a black belt in that dojo and go outside and beat everybody at every dojo at every place that you go. No. Because you don't know what that dojo has taught other people. Understand, I'm going to say this, I'm going to piss off every martial artist with this, but it is 1,000% the truth. Alright? Pay attention, because this affects every martial art, including BJJ. You have a sensei. You have a student. The student grows in rank. White belt, yellow belt, green belt, blue belt, brown belt, I missed orange, red, and black. Orange is between blue and green, I think. I'm not going to swear to it because every school has a different system of what color belt that they have. For Taekwondo, when I was taking Taekwondo, it was white, then it was yellow, then it was green, then it was orange, then it was blue, then it was brown, then it was red, then it was black. All right? And, and to top that off, before you can get to each other belt, you had degrees in which you had to get in that belt. All right? Now, I'm against the degree system, and I'm against the belt system in general because I was um, verbally abused during Taekwondo 
by a 13 year old when I was like 16. All right. And this kid abused me and got me in so much trouble. I had to do so many damn push ups. You know, I'm not so much mad at the sensei disciplining me. I'm mad at the sensei not catching this fucking abuse. But this kid had more rank than me in the class. But I could take that kid to my neighborhood and his ass would get kicked. I almost guarantee goddamn kid I could have beat his ass. You know, because what he failed to understand is that I didn't come into Taekwondo not knowing some martial arts. You know, I knew karate and I was working on Kung Fu before I got there. But, you know, I heard of Taekwondo because of her Perez. So that's why I wanted to do Taekwondo. So I could be like Olympus. Okay? And then I started finding other martial arts. Ninjutsu and stuff like this. Kenpo. Kenpo. Aikido. Judo. Jiu-Jitsu. The standing guy. I didn't know about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu until I got into the army. I knew it existed. I just didn't like it. And then I liked it less when I started learning it. Alright? But the thing is, I suck at BJJ. I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm going to take an L if I go into your gym and we start rolling. Not because my hips fucked up, just because I straight fucking suck at BJJ. If I take and go into your gym and you do BJJ and we decide that we're going to do standing martial arts, as in like Wing Chun or Kung Fu or Gung Fu or some Jeet Kune Do or some shit like that, now... I got a fighting chance because most people who are just stuck with BJJ don't really know how to combat someone who's a standing fighter. If I just pissed you off, that means you do BJJ and you're going to prove me wrong and that's fine. But I can almost guarantee you when I was learning in the army, what I learned in the army is probably the same shit. You probably have a better sense of it because military BJJ is probably not the same thing as BJJ. But the problem is it ain't the BJJ did you have to deal with? It's the fucker using it on you. All right? And that can be said for any martial art. As I said, I have a, a set rule that I live by. There is no such thing as superior martial artist. Excuse me. That is a misstep. There is no such thing as a superior martial art. There are only superior martial artists in that set martial art. So if I'm real good at Kung Fu and I'm one of the best in the world, then I'm one of the best in the world at Kung Fu until I'm not. Which means until I meet that guy who's been training just as long, just as hard, and come from a different background. So let's say for Americans, I am the baddest Kung Fu dude of color. Which means I'm the best native, I'm the best black, I'm the best white. All right. Now I go over to China and get my ass handed to me by somebody who's been living it all their fucking life because their family raised them from pampers to pants. And maybe even from pampers to skirts in Kung Fu. And they know everything that America has not been taught. And why do I say that? As I started off saying, you have a sensei and you have a student. As the student becomes closer to the sensei, the student learned what the sensei taught him. But then the student starts to become a sensei. He starts to take on other students. He redesigns what he learned from his teacher. So, he can beat his students the way his teacher can beat him. So, their martial arts has evolved because this teacher who taught this teacher to teach this student was taught by another person who couldn't probably do the same stuff exactly, so he evolved it. So, when he taught it to this guy, this guy evolved it. So, when he taught it to this guy and this teacher will recognize his students, students, by style. But if his student has been taught and he adapts his style and he comes back around and he beats up his teacher's teacher, that is evolution, which means this student was a good teacher if his student can come back and beat his teacher. But nine times out of ten, that's not something that has been heard of. And if it has been, I've never heard of it. But for the sake of argument, let's say that it does happen. Because martial arts is always evolving. That is why there's no such thing as a superior martial art. Because everyone who gets superior in that martial art adapts it and prays that no one can adapt to their style so they're fighting. You know, if in traditional Kung Fu, it is taught, let me rephrase that, I was taught, boom, close the impact, watch my hand, boom, okay? Now when you get into a fight, you tell me when you're going to sit here with your hands open and boom, and try to clap your shit closed on impact. You're not going to have time. 
this cuts the air easy. But when you connect, there's a good chance that you can see this a lot faster than you can see this. Because this is a smaller, condensed, moving thing where this is wider. So if I'm going for a snake strike, and that technically was a crane. If I'm going for a snake, mouth open. If I'm going for a snake strike, you can probably see it a lot faster when they're not like this. So you see this, you know, versus this, things are going to change, all right? I know for certain, you know, for certain Wing Chun, you keep your hands open until impact. You know, it also depends on who's teaching you what Wing Chun, because there's more than one. So if they throw a punch, boom, boom, you know, I block and I strike. And if they're doing Kung Fu, I block, I kick, and I strike. So if I'm doing that and you have learned that, and you know that that's like form one, you're going to adapt and adjust to that. So that if we square off, and I take a Kung Fu stance or a Wing Chun stance, or if you can go into Tiger, and you realize what the fuck I'm about to do, and you know the same shit I know, so I go into Tiger, you might be like, okay, this motherfucker's about to do Tiger. Let me do Dragon, because Dragon is supposed to be his polar opposite. Okay? So let's say my Tiger and my Dragon is good. Better than yours, even. So you go from dragon, tiger, to eagle. So now we got a problem. Now I got to adapt. All right? Because I don't know eagle very well. All right? But let's say I know enough tiger. I know enough to go to dragon. To do enough blocks. But what if my blocks aren't good enough to get you to stop your eagle strikes? So what if I'm missing? And you're just ripping, ripping. So now I got to adapt or I'm going to die. You know? So again, no such thing as superior martial arts. Only superior martial arts in that art. Now, getting back on track. If I have better hand and foot skills and all you have is bow staff skills, it's apparent that I just have to get to your defenses. That's it. I have to make you lose that weapon. If I can get that weapon away from you, and you've never had any blocking training other than somebody swinging a stick, boom, boom, you're blocking. Hold on. So this is your stick, boom, boom, you're blocking. You know, these are short blocks because they are protecting here. They're not the block from here where it's all the way out. They're blocked, they're short blocks. So if I throw a punch on this side and you block, but you don't counter, but you block my other counter, you're gonna be blocking my shit all day. So every time I throw a punch, you know, cause I'm gonna plot, I'm gonna punch and, and I'm gonna keep throwing punches. So you're gonna be doing this while I'm doing this. Now, eventually, my arm's gonna get tired of getting hit. So I'm gonna have to step back and find another play. So if I start stepping back to throw a kick, I've just given you range to keep me at bay. And as long as you can keep me at bay with your stick, then I have a problem. But if you swing, you swing your stick. And I catch it here. I lock here. And I break your stick. Now I have a stick. But you only know how to work with the long bow. Not the short bow. Not the chobos. So, now you have a problem. Your problem is I have a stick. So if I have a stick and you have a stick and we're both clocking, but you're still doing this, this, and this, or maybe this and maybe that, but I know how to work with that, which you don't, your weapon is no good to you now. Because now it's all about how am I going to get to your defenses with that smaller stick if you haven't been taught how to work that stick. All right? So what if I can clock and lock your sticks like they do in Kali and snatch your stick? Now I have two sticks but you've never been in a train situation where they teach you block, block, clock, clock, but they don't teach you that. And I have both sticks, so I'm going to your ass. But you knew how to, you had me when you had the both staff. But once I disarmed you, now I have you. So like I said, you know, it's better to actually be the weapon versus only know the weapon. See, a lot of people get mixed up and they get confused and then they start... Well, I got this weapon, I got this weapon. Yes, you have that weapon. Everybody has a weapon. 
Everybody has martial art weapons that they train with all the time. But the problem is really simple. When you become complacent and relying on your weapon instead of your hand and foot combat skills, you are going to get fucked up. Now, I'm pissing off everybody. I'm not doing it intentionally. I'm doing it to make a fucking point. Because there are a lot of people who do martial arts, but they only rely on their weapons. All right? And when you become relying on your weapons instead of being the weapon, because a weapon is supposed to be an extension of your skill set. But if your skill set is only weapons, you are in deep fucking shit. Understand how that works. A weapon can be taken from you at any time. Which is why no matter how much you see me training with weapons, I will never bring a weapon to a street fight. I will never bring a weapon to a fight, period. Because I don't know what you know. I know what I know. That's it. There can be rumors that you know all these martial arts. And it could scare me. And you might not know jack shit. There could be rumors that you are better without weapons than you are with weapons. So the first damn thing I'm going to do is make sure that I don't take anything with me that you can use against me. Because I'm going to fight with this long before I fight with this, or this, or this, or my knees, or my feet. Because the smartest fighters know how to survive a fight. Those overzealous motherfuckers that just think they're the baddest pieces of whatever the hell they can be are generally the ones that are either going to wind up doing very well until they're not, or they're going to come against that guy who just got pretty fucking lucky. And it does happen. You can get your ass kicked by somebody who can't fight just as easy as you can get your ass kicked by somebody who can. Mike Tyson proved that with James Buster Douglas. All right? We all know that shit was fucked up. But the problem is really quite simple. You have weapons, and weapons are great. But a weapon is not always the advantage that you think it is. A weapon can be taken from you if you don't know what you're doing. It's the same thing with it there. You don't bring a, a knife to a gunfight. Well, here's that thing. How close am I standing to you with my knife? Because a lot of people are like, you know, a bullet will kill you faster. A bullet will kill you faster. It's possible. And again, how close am I standing to you with my knife? This is something that you will never win an argument with regardless because there are some people who are for knives. There are some people for guns. The thing with a gun is you have to point and shoot. And you also need to be able to get to that gun. Now, same thing can be said with a knife. You have to be able to get to it, all right? Both of those are the only true factors. You have to be able to get to it. Not everybody walks around. This is my gun. I walk around with my gun all day long. You know, this is a cell phone. I, I, I walk around with my cell phone all day long. But I don't walk around like this, practicing to shoot people all day. I don't do that shit. Not too many people do. You're going to go practice shoot somebody, you go to the firing range. This is my knife. I don't walk around practicing stabbing people all day. So, in that point, it's true. You have to be able to get to it. If we're standing side by side, and I see you go for your pocket, because we're arguing, and I see you go for your pocket, because most people don't watch their enemy's hands, they always watch their eyes. And that's fine and everything, until it's not. But if I see your hand go anywhere near your waist... I was a bug. If I see your hand going near your waist, I'm going for your hand. I'm not letting your hand get near your waist. I'm not letting your hand get near your pocket. Because if you pack in a knife or a gun, my danger sense has just kicked in. And especially if we're in striking distance. If we're in striking distance, I'm going to tell you right now. If I can't get to your hand, I'm going to dance you get to your chin. Because that's going to be the first reflex I'm going to have. Oh, this motherfucker going for his hand. Bam! Yeah, I'm going to come across that chin. Because that's going to change the aspect of your hand going into your pocket. Especially if you're right-handed and I cross you with the left. Because you might just wind up doing what people do naturally is grab your face. Now that that kept your hand from there, I'm not going to stop. Because after I check your chin, I'm going to check the bitch again. I got two hands, don't I? You got two sides in your face. Boom, boom. I'm just going to level that shit in there. Because I'm going to need to. Because I don't know what you were going for when you went for your waist. It could have been a cell phone. It could have been a knife, could have been a gun. About this time, all hell gonna break loose because either I'm gonna hit the ground or you gonna hit the ground. If I hit you and you hit the ground, or if I hit you and you stagger back, I'm not gonna stop with that one hit or that two piece combo. I'm gonna keep coming because I may not get the chance to do anything else. That's the reality of the situation. If you got your gun and we're fighting and your hands are behind your back, 
I need to go ahead and hit you because your hands are behind your back. I don't know what's back there. You could be unfastening your knife, you could be unfastening your gun, and I need to be on your ass like stank on shit. These are the things that people don't tell you about martial arts. These are the things that people don't tell you about fights in real life. If someone's going for their gun and you see them going for their gun and you don't do anything at that moment, you're going to get shot or you're going to get stabbed. And it's more than likely going to be your own damn fault. All right? Now, if you don't see it coming and you just happen to be talking to the guy and all of a sudden you see his hand go and he just cuts across your throat and you're, you're dead, you know, because you didn't see it coming. There's, there's, there's a thing about striking distance that you need to understand. If you're going to argue with somebody, you do not get in striking distance. Because if you get in striking distance, it's a good chance that they can fucking cut your throat. And this is that difference maker where people were talking about knives and guns and don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Well, it depends on who the fuck's fucking holding that damn knife. Because a lot of people think that a knife is is not going to be good against the gun. This is where striking distance comes in. You know, you get a gun, if you know how to shoot a gun properly, you don't necessarily have to grab it and aim it. If you already know how to shoot it properly, you can shoot through your pants. All right? Nobody's even going to notice you shot the person until that person drops and blood starts to bleed out of their ass. But with that knife, you know, if they're close enough for you to get your throat cut, you will get your throat cut. That's why I like arm's distance. That's 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 good enough for me. Like, if you stay at arm's distance, we good. You know, we can have that argument. But if you step in past arm's distance, I fucked up. Which means you're either going to shoot me or you're going to stab me. And I ain't down for either one of those damn things. So once you get past the arm's distance, hey, right here, you get right here and you get in here, it's out. It actually should be on when you get in arm's distance. Which goes back again, if you have a bow staff, you have range. I have to work against your bow staff. I have to work against your defenses. Where if we both just fighters, it's mano a mano, ain't no weapons involved other than the two weapons that are fighting, your skill versus my skill, then we're going to see who's going to win in the end of that. Because it's going to be either a five-minute blowout or it's going to be a one-minute knockout. Because you know, most fights don't last but three to five minutes. And I tell you that because if you go watch fights and then you go like watch bum fights and shit like that, you will see the difference. If you watch UFC, you can see the difference. Some fights don't go past the first round. They really don't. That's why it's three five-minute rounds or five three-minute rounds. I don't know how the hell that shit works. But I know that the round is counted. You watch the rounds and you're going to see, you know, if you watch, boom, boom, motherfucker drop, you know, shit happens. There are very fast knockouts. Unfortunately, there was a boxer on, the, on my um, news feed that passed away. He's like 24 or some shit. Because he was, he was damaged real bad, but he had a brain bleed. A, bit of, a brain bleed. And these are the things that happens in these kind of fucking fields of fight. My battery's about to die, so I'm going to end this really, really quickly. But I'm just going to tell you, in, in, in all personal experiences, I'll probably make a part two after I get out of the shower. But in all personal experiences, you know... If you're good with weapons, great. But you need to be the weapon before you become good with weapons. It's just my personal thoughts on that. You do not have to agree. But I want you to understand something. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to be walking around with a bow staff. You're not going to be walking around with nunchucks. I don't know what your city laws are. So for the most part, you're not going to be walking around your city rocking a pair of nunchucks. You're not going to be rocking around your city rocking hook swords or butterfly swords. You're not just going to walk around the city and have them hanging on your body. You know, I don't think there's permits for that shit. But you being the weapon, you walking around the city, you don't need any of those weapons. And worst comes to shirt, worst, you know, conventional weapons instead of keys. Boom, boom. They were just as good. You know, it just depends. And like I said, striking distance. I will try to make a second part to this. Because I don't know how many videos, I'm, how many views I'm going to get. But I will try to make a second part to this after I get out of the shower. That being said, I got to go take out the trash because it's almost 11 o'clock. I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf. Thank you for watching. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two. Be seeing you.